Well, until someone gets a TARDIS or a DeLorean to work and we can go back in time, rocks are our best piece of evidence for learning about our planet's history. You can learn what was happening on Earth millions or even billions of years ago. All you need to do is know where and how to look. Lucky for us, I brought a ringer. Dr. Chuck Bailey literally wrote the book on Shenandoah geology, and he's going to teach us a little bit about how these rocks formed. I'm Chuck Bailey. I'm a structural geologist at William & Mary. The rocks that are sort of underfoot are very old um, granitic gneisses. So these are rocks that originally were granites. They formed as magma cool deep underground. But that magma was later sort of sheared under very high temperatures, and that turned it into a metamorphic rock that we know is a gneiss. You might be able to see in the camera images, there's a bit of layering in this rock. Layering develops in metamorphic rocks in a way that you might think about as, um, as you make candy or taffy. The, the material's pretty soft, and as earth forces shear and squeeze these rocks, different minerals are effectively dragged out into layers. So it's a secondary feature that comes as the rock is deformed and metamorphosed, much like we might do with Play-Doh or even um, cookie dough. The change from an igneous rock to a metamorphic rock is one that's sort of hard to understand sometimes because it happens in places that we can't see. Um, these granites formed many, many miles underneath the Earth, and then later uh, there was a collision between vast continents over a billion years ago, and these rocks were effectively caught up in the vice um, that was squeezing uh, as these different tectonic plates were colliding. These rocks are generally identifiable because um, many of them have a, a certain layering that's developed to them. And then you've got to be able to identify a few different minerals in these rocks. And one of those is felspar. And hopefully you can see here the light white colored mineral is a felspar. And it's distinctive, it's different than quartz, which is the darker mineral in here. But these metamorphic rocks have both felspar and quartz. And if you can identify those, you're well on your way to identifying the metamorphic rocks. So the rock behind me is kind of a gnarly outcrop of greenstone. And this greenstone is uh, originally, it would have actually formed as lava. A uh, very hot lava flow, basaltic in composition, that flowed out over the surface of the earth here in what would eventually become Shenandoah National Park. The granitic rocks that we saw at our first stop, they would have cooled literally over thousands of years. And during this cooling, you would have grown large mineral crystals. Whereas this lava flow was erupted rapidly and it cooled very rapidly. Therefore, the grain size, the, the texture in the crystals is really microscopic, very hard to see with the naked eye. The greenstones, these metabasalts in Shenandoah National Park, they flowed out over the landscape about 550 to 560 million years ago. That's a long time, but that's half the age of the rocks we saw originally. These lava flows extend from what is now Pennsylvania to central Virginia. They covered thousands of square kilometers. And what was happening is effectively the crust in this region was starting to be torn apart by tectonic forces, and that allowed magma from very deep in the mantle to rise, melt, and spread laterally across the landscape. The primary thing to look for is that the, the greenstones, the metabasalts, are um, fairly fine-grained. You don't see large crystals in them, and they're almost invariably going to be composed of a light green to dark greenish mineral. So those are the two characteristics that I would look for. We are on an outcrop, a very small but very exciting outcrop on the side of Bear Fence Mountain. And the rocks that I'm sitting on, that I have my hand on, they're actually sandstones and conglomerates. They're made up of little pieces, little chunks of eroded granitic gneiss. And if you remember back to our very first stop, we looked at the very old, oldest rocks in the Blue Ridge, these granitic gneisses. Well, at some point, those rocks were eroded and then deposited as sediment. And in this outcrop, there are delicate layers of sand and mud, and then in some places, very coarse-grained gravel, all bits and pieces of that granite. So this is a sedimentary rock. Already today, we've seen igneous rocks and metamorphosed igneous rocks. And here, we're seeing a really lovely example of a sedimentary rock, albeit slightly metamorphosed. It still has all the hallmarks of sediment, that is, original layers and original grains that are preserved in this rock. So the sediment that's preserved in this outcrop was clearly formed by the erosion of the granitic materials. And I can imagine a landscape where we had bare, bare granitic outcrops sticking up and that the, the granite would slough off and fall down. And streams, rivers, uh, would then sort of push that sediment down into valleys. And it was there in these valleys with running, flowing water that the sand was winnowed and sorted and turned into these little layers and laid down as sediment. So the, the rock layers that we see here 
are below the greenstones. That is, they form prior to the eruption of the lava flows. So we know that these rocks must be older than about 570 million, and they're younger than the one billion year old rocks that are below us and are bits and pieces in here. So our understanding of the exact time when this formed is uh, you know, not as well known as we would like. One of the things I can do is if I rub my finger across this, I feel the grit from those little pieces of sand. They're rounded and angular pieces of felsbar and quartz. So it has this sort of grittiness to it. It also contains the felsbar and the quartz that we've seen earlier. But if you look closely, especially with a magnifying lens, you'll notice that they're, they're somewhat rounded. They're not interlocking. So it has the texture of a sedimentary rock. You don't have to come all the way to Shenandoah to find awesome rocks. I bet you can find really cool rocks where you live or go to school. See if you can discover which geologic forces created the rocks near you. You never know what you can learn about the Earth millions of years ago just by taking a look at the rocks underneath your feet. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.